Member for Balimba, I call the member for Coomera. Uh, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, finally some good news, some great news in fact for the Northern Gold Coast in relation to buses. In relation to buses, we've been fighting for this for a long time with petitions, um, with writing to the minister, with calling for the need for additional buses. We've basically got four bus services on the Northern Gold Coast in my electorate each going in and out of the Ormo train station. Um, last year, the Gold Coast City Council, uh, uh, Division 1 Councillor Mark Hamill, Division 3 Councillor and Deputy Mayor Donna Gates uh, were instrumental in making a commitment, 50 per cent commitment towards upgrading all of those bus services to deliver up to 700 additional bus services. Uh, it, didn't, uh, get, uh, it didn't get the support of the government last year, uh, but the good news is it's now uh, been supported. And I thank the Minister uh, for Transport and Main Roads for uh, providing this funding, uh, essentially to provide an uplift in bus services for highest priority areas, such as the Northern Gold Coast services, and it will also benefit from $8.2 million commitment from the Gold Coast City Council, as I've just been, just been talking about. So some wonderful news in relation to bus services on the Northern Gold Coast. I'd like to look, look at some of the detail in relation to that to see uh, when we can hope to see those uh, services being delivered uh, and, and what the scope of them is. And finally, uh, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, some more good news. The Northern Gold Coast Health and Hospital Precinct uh, is now a reality. It's now actually got a line, it's now got a line item. This is the third budget since the, uh, since the Labor uh, promise, and I'll talk about that in a moment, uh, before the election. Uh, but it's now, got a, it's now a line item uh, in the budget, and it's showing $20 million for uh, a $1.3 billion spend, but hey, it's $20 million. It's a lot more than we've seen in the budget before. But if we remember and go back to uh, the election, I remember very vividly on the 19th of October it was, the day that the uh, polling booths opened, the pre-poll booths opened, uh, and there was the Premier and the then Health Minister and the local, uh, local uh, candidate, Labor candidate, down at uh, Gold Coast University Hospital with all of the pictures and showing we're going to build a hospital on the northern Gold Coast. And indeed, uh, not only that, but there was a big splash, $160 million uh, was the headline. Uh, but the interesting thing was when you went through what the $160 million was all about, um, it, it turned out to be more than $100 million for Gold Coast University Hospital. Uh, it turned out to be $40 million uh, for the uh, so-called satellite hospital down the southern end of the Gold Coast, uh, a few million dollars for uh, Rabina, and in the end $3 million for the Gold Coast, Northern Gold Coast Hospital. Uh, so it wasn't going to build a hospital. It wasn't about $160 million for the hospital. It was $3 million, but it was enough to fool the uh, those people handing out for labour because they, their mantra was, oh, we're going to build a hospital in Coomera. And that just happened to be the day the polling booths opened, so they had no clue as to what was really going on. But anyway, it's now a line item in the budget. It's now uh, coming to fruition, uh, and we're told that it might be delivered in the next six years or so. But when it comes to roads, uh, we're sadly littered uh, with broken promises and in action. Uh, for example, the exit 38. There's absolutely no funding in this budget. There wasn't any funding in the previous budget. The one before that, the one before that, the one before that. Indeed, there's been a business case on the minister's desk since November 2018, and there's not one dollar for exit 38. And I thank the Leader of the Opposition for mentioning that particular project on the Northern Gold Coast because of the economic impact to the businesses on the Northern Gold Coast, let alone the people that are commuting in and out of Exit 38 uh, from the cane lands and so forth, let alone those people, the commuters, but the businesses. They are stuck for anything up to an hour getting in and out of their businesses because of the congestion there, and there's not one dollar, not one dollar in, uh, in the budget. Uh, federal funding was the thing that got some other projects up and down the, uh, the, uh, the Northern Corridor going, uh, the first one. And, and may I say, that was in 
May 2019, the first money was, was committed by the Feds, uh, by, the, by Bert Van Manen, the member for Ford, uh, and the minister was dragged kicking and streaming to announce some money after the budget was actually uh, uh, tabled that year. Uh, it didn't have a line item. That's, you know, $93 million didn't have a line item. That's how much of a surprise it came to the minister in that regard. But the sad thing is this. We look at Q-Trip, the latest Q-Trip when compared to previous Q-Trips. Pacific Motorway Exit 41 upgrade interchange is now, for some reason or other, blowing out to the 2024-25 financial year, uh, according to Q-Trip. We've got $42 million spent to date another $22 million spent in 22-23. It should be finished by the end of 23, by the way. Another uh, $8.5 million in 23-24, and then another $9.2 million in 24-25. It beggars belief that we're going to drag the completion of that project out that far. I just can't believe how it can happen. Sad news for people on the northern Gold Coast in relation to the full upgrade of exit 45. Uh, the, uh, that's the Ormo exit. Um, the business case in this budget, or sorry, in this, in, in this Q-trip, is suggested that there's going to be $1.5 million to, to do the business case, and it's projected to be $960,000 in 25-26, and one, not $540,000 beyond 25-26. That's just for the business case. That's just to determine whether or not we're going to build um, a, full, uh, a full upgrade of Exit 45. The, Pacific, uh, the, the current upgrade, the $20 million uh, upgrade, that's being stretched out over uh, four periods as well. Apparently we've spent $5.4 million to now, $5.6 million next financial year, $4 million the following, and $5 million the following. I don't know how you can possibly drag these things out any longer than that. We're talking a $20 million project, and it's going to take four years to actually deliver that project. It's got, it just beggars belief. But the big one, the, the saddest one, is the Pacific, the, the exit 49 upgrade inter of the interchange. That is so sad because that is the busiest uh, ex uh, uh, interchange on the northern Gold Coast. It feeds into Pimpama, the fastest growing region in Queensland, at the centre of the fastest growing region in Queensland. In fact, Pimpama, as a suburb, is the fastest growing suburb in Australia outside a capital city. And yet, even though in February this year I was promised that Exit 49 would be completed by around May 2024, we now see that only um, two thirds of the funding is committed in that period, and the other 38.3 million is not going to be spent until the 24-25 financial year. In other words, there's still a significant amount of work being done after I was promised by the regional director that, yes, it was going to be completed before the 30th of June 2024. It's now not going to be completed before that date, and we can't say that $38 million um, is just tidying up a bit of gardening and a bit of, uh, a bit of this and that. That is a significant additional spend beyond uh, beyond the 23-24 promised uh, timeline. Uh, not to mention the second M1. I'm not going to go into that because enough, enough has been said about that. But when you consider that stage one of stage one hasn't started, okay? Uh, we said, no, the, the, the minister again before the election, oh no, we're going to spend $1.53 billion on uh, the Coomera connector, 16 kilometres. We're not going to muck around with a little short stretch. We're going to do a 16 kilometre stretch. It's going to cost $1.53 billion. Uh, and then it turns out that, no, we're not. We're going to spend $2.1 billion. We're going to get four lanes instead of six lanes. And we haven't even started. We haven't even started the project. So stage one of stage one, to explain, stage one is the 16 kilometres. Stage one of stage one is the northern part of that 16 kilometres. That's the first stage that's going to be started. And then there's the middle stage, and then there's the, the southern stage. Neither of those are even on the drawing board, as far as I can tell, at this stage of the game. So no, no business, uh, sorry, no, um, no signed, um, signed contracts on that. No signed contracts, by the way, coming back to exit 49, 
No signed contracts on Exit 49. They were meant to be signed earlier this year, and we still, to this day, have not signed the contracts to commence construction of Exit 49. That's how far we are uh, behind. And the minister, he blames everybody else. He's now blaming COVID and a whole range of other things I see in the latest, uh, latest media. The, uh, uh, the, the, the difference between, in, in, at Exit 49, the difference between what it should have been and what it is, is 14 million in the first year, 55 million in the second year, 42 million in the 23-24 year to finish it all off, but that's been blown out to, uh, as I said, uh, four years. Now, let's just talk about why these things are important. The Northern Gold Coast, based on the Coomera electorate, is the fastest growing region in Queensland. I have um, 100 and th sorry, uh, 33.2 per cent over quota on the number of voters in the electorate. I have the largest electorate in a whole range of areas. I have the largest electorate by population, 87,000 is the estimate, for June 2021. According to Treasury figures, I've got over 50,000 voters. The average is 38,000. Compare that, for, ex for example, with Gaben. There's 34,000 voters in Gaben. I've got 16,000 more voters in my electorate than the, than the electorate of Gaben. I've got 12,000 more than the average in the state. It's a huge growth um, uh, uh, number. It is far more, in fact, making the comparison between when the figures were done back in 2016 for the redistribution. The Coomera electorate was allegedly, uh, allegedly had 30,722 voters, and it was projected to have, by, in, by the um, enrolment uh, date of 29th of the 8th, 2023, so in other words, in 15 months' time, it was projected to have 40,367. Okay, so it was meant to go up by about 10,000, and I'd be about 9.5 per cent over. And what I've got 15 months earlier than that date is 50,000. By the time we get to that date, it's going to be around 55,000. Did they get it wrong? Absolutely they did, because when you compare the other, uh, the other electorates in the state, none of the other electorates are anywhere near being blown out the proportion of figures being blown out like that. In fact, talking about Gaben again, Gaben is very much on track at the moment. Uh, sorry, Gaben is projected in 15 months' time to have 34,600 voters. Uh, right now, Gaben's got 34,009. So they're on track, Gaben's on track to have around about what they estimated back when they were doing these figures. By then, of course, I'll have 55,000. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a moot moot point, but it's the point that I've been making all the way along. You don't understand what we're up against. We are up against massive growth. I've got the largest population of young people. I've got the largest population going to school. I've got at day eight figures in, in, in uh, February this year. I had 19,777 kids going to school in the electorate. That's schools, 23 of them, started with nine in 2009, I've got 23 now. 19,777 going in, going to school in the electorate. There's another 2,500 kids going to school just outside the electorate in five other schools nearby. So I've got 22,000 kids. They're all growing up, they're buying cars, they're driving. We're getting busier and busier and busier as we, uh, as we uh, go along to the next election in 2024. I just 57,000 is what I've projected the figures to be for, for, uh, for the state seat of Coomera. But the key, the key issues, uh, key, key project, uh, projects that I need is that funding for Exit 38. We have to get the Feds on board and do a 50-50 deal with them and get Exit 38 sorted out. It's 110 million, um, uh, approximately 110 million now. It was 87 million back in 2018. Exit 45, we've got to bring that forward. It has to be built far more quickly. Um, we've got to do the uh, slip lane at Exit 41. But the other one, the, the sad, you know, and I've written to a couple of ministers now and, and not received any response from either of them, uh, is the Police Citizens Youth Club, the PCYC at Pimpama. Uh, the Feds were on board before the election. The Gold Coast City Council and Mark Hamill, the Division I councillor, is on board. But I cannot get the minister to write to me. I cannot get the minister to write to me, and I mentioned it to him the other day, and he said it can't be far away. I'm hoping that I'm going to hear from the minister uh, in the next little while to give me some sort of an indication 
All I'm looking for is $7 million to do, to do a deal with the Feds. Thank you. Mr Speaker, Deputy Speaker. Call the member for Mirabara. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I rise in support of the appropriation bills, 22-23.